I'm 30 male, having a hard time coping with my wife, 29 female, having cheated on me with our neighbor, 51 male. It has been 476 days since I confronted her about it, how do I know? Because every time I catch myself thinking about it I tell myself, it's only been X days, maybe you won't think about it tomorrow. So to go back to the beginning I had just taken on a new project and new responsibilities at work. I was working a lot of hours, 60 plus per week, and was noticeably stressed. It was in May of 2015 that I noticed that she had added a password to her phone. When confronted about it she told me it was because she was planning my father's day present and didn't want me to ruin the surprise. About a week later she came to me and told me that she felt guilty keeping a big secret from me and told me that she was having our neighbor, a contractor, build a home office for me as my present. It struck me as odd as in our six years together she has never said she felt guilty about anything and always insists that she never regrets anything in her life. Time goes on, her phone is still password protected, and things don't feel right. I see her using her phone and smiling to herself more and more often. But when I ask her what she is doing she says nothing and puts her phone away. So one morning I wait for her to get in the shower and I grab her phone before it requires the password. I go through her messages and find that she is texting the neighbor. I am all covered in frosting, you wanna lick it off? There were no other messages to the neighbor but I found out later that was because she had set up her phone to delete messages after a certain amount of time. I felt uncomfortable with it but I knew she had a perverted sense of humor and I thought she would never do anything to hurt me. More time goes by and the neighbor is spending more and more time at our house but the office is being completed slower and slower. I can't help but worry that something isn't right so I start checking her location using Google Timeline. It was at this point that I realized that there are large gaps in her GPS history because she was turning off her phone's GPS. Fast forward to July and at this point the paranoia is driving me nuts so I tell her that I need to install new antivirus on her phone. While she has it unlocked for me I install anti-theft software so I can remotely turn the GPS back on and set up AT&T message backup and restore so I can rid all of her text messages from that point on my computer. The next day my mother asks to spend time with my two kids so my wife drops them off with her and has the day to herself. I watch my wife's activity from work as she spends the day trying to meet up with the neighbor but is unsuccessful because he is busy with another job site. That night we get the kids back from my mom's house and we go out to dinner with the neighbor, his girlfriend, and his son. My wife and his girlfriend are having a good time drinking, laughing, and just joking around. His girlfriend mentions that she would like to see Magic Mike XXL, I say it's a good idea I'll watch the kids so my wife and her can go. So my wife and her go and the neighbor and I go back to my house so the kids can play video games together. The kids are back in my son's room playing games and the neighbor is sitting across from me on the other couch. It is at this point that my wife starts texting him. She is describing inappropriate acts she would like to perform with him and he is reciprocating. She tells him to check his Snapchat and at the same time I get a Snapchat from her too and it is her pleasuring herself in a bathroom stall. They keep talking, trying to figure out when they can meet up and hook up. They decide on Monday morning after I go to work. So in my head, I had already planned to pretend to leave and circle back to catch them. But then they tell each other that they love each other and it is all I can do to not leap off the couch and knock him out. But I contain myself and continue reading the conversation unfolding in front of me. Then he tells her, you're my girl now, to which she replies, always have been, ending with him writing, and always will be. My wife and the neighbor's girlfriend return from the movie and I ask them, politely, to sit down. I then ask the kids to stay in my son's room and shut the door. I return to the living room and confront my wife and the neighbor. I say, so you two love each other huh? My wife goes into full-blown denial mode and the neighbor's girlfriend starts smacking him. I ask my wife if she has been texting him, she says no. So I show her the text messages, she admits to it but says it was the first time it had gone that far. I ask my wife if she has sent him pictures, she says no. So I show her the picture, she admits it but says it was the first time. I ask her if she is sleeping with him and she says no. Because I didn't wait to catch them sleeping with each other I didn't have evidence to prove her wrong so that one stayed unresolved. I tell her that I am leaving her, she tells me that she will make sure I never see my kids again if I do. 
She planned on using the fact that I had attempted suicide in high school to prove me unfit to have the children. She continues to say that it was my fault for being so busy with work and stressed out, that she just wanted someone she could talk to. Then she gives me an ultimatum to decide what I'm going to do or she will decide for me. The neighbor's girlfriend starts defending the two of them saying that it couldn't have been serious if they weren't sleeping together and that my wife and I are too perfect together to let this break us up. The neighbors go home and my wife and I argue for the rest of the night about what we are going to do. We go to bed separately having not resolved anything. We keep going back and forth on the subject all weekend and finally settle on we were going to separate temporarily while we figure out what we want. I was going to stay in the house and she was going to take the kids and go to her mom's house. That Monday I go to work and I get a text from her in the middle of a meeting with my bosses stating that she had explained things to our kids, but that they were upset and I need to explain it to them also. I get home from work to find my kids crying. She had told them that mommy had to move out because dad was mad at her. When my son wanted to stay with me she told him that he can't. My son put it together that if mommy has to move out because I'm mad at her and he must move out then I must have been mad at him too. My daughter was crying because my son was, I don't think she was old enough to understand what was happening. It was at that moment I realized she was going to drag the kids through hell if I left her so I swallowed my feelings and begged her to stay. She agreed and insisted that I apologize to our neighbor since we were still going to need to hang out with them because our sons are good friends. I hate it but I do it anyway, we still hang out with them from time to time and they come to our various birthday and holiday parties. But I'd do anything for my kids and I behave civilly every time. Things died down for a while, I still think about it constantly. I worry how can I keep from making her so unhappy that she cheats on me again. Then almost a year from the original incident, around Father's Day again, she sends him pictures again. She claims it was an accident that she meant to send them to me instead. I don't fully believe her but I move on anyway. Things have been quiet on that front for about 4 months now but I still think about it constantly. This is going to sound stupid but I feel like I have a part of my brain that I can't shut off, that is always thinking. I used to use that to solve programming problems and it made me very good at my job. But ever since this incident, the only thing it thinks about is her and him and if I did the right thing. My job performance has suffered and I feel like I haven't gotten sleep in months. I'm afraid that after this much time, and the fact that I begged her back, that to say that I want a divorce now would only make her more vindictive towards my children and me. I just feel like I have put myself so deep in a hole that I can never get back out. I haven't really talked to anyone about this. I didn't want to talk to my mom about it because I felt she would treat my wife differently and I didn't need the two fighting any more than they already do. I tried talking to one friend about it but his advice was to put my trust in God but that was not much solace for me as I am an atheist. So I have no clue what to do with my feelings or how to move on from this. DL, DR. I caught my wife cheating on me over a year ago. I stayed with her for the sake of our children, but I haven't been able to get it off of my mind since. A divorce attorney. Hello. Go to him with all the texts and evidence you have. The thing she told you about keeping the kids from you and using your suicide attempt in high school is BS. Is there any record of the suicide attempt? Can you start therapy yesterday? You need to show you are working on your mental health if that could possibly be an issue. Look up recording laws in your state and record any bad parenting she does or any threats she makes to you. But first. Talk, to, a, lawyer. Every excuse you are giving yourself to not get one is an excuse. Who cares if she was a paralegal? She isn't a lawyer. Don't spare expense on one and shop for one. Find a good one. Don't just go with the first one you meet. You are 30 years old for heaven's sake. Wife slept with my married neighbor and now wants to reconcile for sake of family. Three kids involved and I feel guilty. What would you do? I found out last week that my wife of five years and mother of my four-year-old son has been cheating on me for the last three months with my married neighbor. Whilst trying to fix her phone to work on the cruise that we were on, I happened upon several text messages to and from the guy including a picture of his dick set on February 14th. When I confronted her about it she attempted to lie and say it was just a flirting thing, and that she admits to having an emotional affair but that nothing had happened. 
her indignant response was that she was always with the kids so how could I actually do anything? Against my better judgment, I actually started to slightly believe her but I pressed on and told her that I would pull the records from Verizon and wanted to know what I would find. She then admitted that she was with him, but that is was only once. I immediately suspend service on her cell phone so that she can't contact the guy. Needless to say I was a wreck and nothing changes a pleasure cruise shipped to a floating prison than finding out this news. I went from angry, to sad, to oddly guilty, and back to angry within minutes of each other. I had three days left on the cruise and there was no major airline service at any of our ports of call so I was stuck with her. For some reason I needed to know every single detail including positions, times, location, etc etc. I now know that this is apparently normal, but at the time I was questioning why I would put myself through this level of detail. After my continuous barrage of questioning, she finally admitted to it happening three times, not just the one, but that all were with protection and always at a hotel. All the while, she is already begging for a second chance for the sake of the family. The family in this instance are my four-year-old son, two older stepkids, and her and I. Fast forward to getting home, I get home and immediately confront the guy. I ask the same questions, admittedly screaming them in the middle of my driveway with a tire iron in hand, and his story mostly matches hers. Finally, could I have gotten to the truth? I tell him that he has to tell his wife, and that my wife would be doing the same if he didn't do it. He tells his wife, but she thinks he's joking and comes over to my house to deliver the mail she was collecting for us. As she walks in the door I tell her that my wife has something to talk to her about, while I am still seething from talking with the guy. My wife tells her and she goes home crying her eyes out. It's also worth mentioning that my wife was acting as her confidant and friend and advising her what APOS her husband was. Apparently, the husband was having multiple affairs including the one with my wife. Next day, the scorned wife and I briefly compare notes since she wants to know every detail as well. Turns out a few inconsistencies but the most major was that he admitted to not using protection and not withdrawing because she said that she couldn't get pregnant. My wife most certainly can get pregnant as evidenced by my four-year-old son and two terminations. Furthermore, I was snipped two years ago to prevent any more. Once confronted with this detail, my wife denies it and was actually pissed that I believed him over her. I was actually considering reconciliation up to the point of hearing the last bit, but it's like a switch went off and told me that this was taking a twist towards Crazyville. She is still begging and asking for a second chance for the sake of the family, but I am holding my ground but feel guilty for doing so. My questions to my fellow Redditors. Am I wrong for wanting to pull the pin on this marriage and not work it out? There are three kids involved that it will likely take an emotional toll on. However, I can't see myself ever trusting her again and that a loveless marriage will only lead to a more unhappy environment than a broken home. She will likely get custody due to me traveling frequently, which I am somewhat okay with. My son adores his mother and, if it wasn't for all this other insanity, was an otherwise happy marriage. DL, DR. My wife slept with my neighbor and lied when confronted multiple times. She now wants to reconcile for the sake of her and I's four-year-old and two older stepkids. I feel guilty for wanting a divorce, what would you do? Update. I think I already knew the answer, but I need some affirmation to make sure I wasn't too far off base. I file tomorrow and hoping for an amicable agreement that we can push through uncontested. I am done and need to focus on healing and being the best dad I can be to my own son. By the way, I just found out the hotel and that she signed for all the rooms. He paid her in cash for the room but whatever. She denies that too. Update 2. Just had another discussion with her. She is open to an amicable divorce and does not want to contest as long as she keep joint custody. Still keeping a lawyer on standby in case she decides otherwise. In her words, I've been to divorce court before. I know I'm screwed so let's do this the easy way. Update 3. I'm getting some feedback about me suspending the cell and I guess I should explain my reasoning. I did not suspend the service to punish her. Given the lies up to that point, I wanted to prevent the two from getting their stories straight until I confronted him directly. Furthermore, I wanted my hands on that phone since it was the only evidence I had at that point. Immediately upon our return I gave her another phone with a new number. 
She also had full use of my phone and the ship's phone during this time. All I can say is that my actions should not be a reflection of how our relationship was up to that point. The very foundation of our relationship was complete trust. I had never even given her phone a second glance to that point and the only reason I was even looking at it was because it wasn't working. We knew each other's passwords to everything and often shared email, Facebook, IM accounts, everything. If a few people still think I'm some kind of control freak, then I guess I'll leave with that label. Update 4. For all those suggesting it, I am not currently interested in starting an open marriage or swinger lifestyle. Thanks for the suggestions though, I am sure that kind of thing works for some people, but I'm not that guy.